Until recently, India hardly had any weight loss drugs, but now they are everywhere. First came the oral semaglutide tablets in 2022, then the injectable forms of semaglutide and terzepatide by 2025, and suddenly everyone is talking about them. These medicines were originally developed for diabetes management, but since they also cause significant weight loss, they are now being widely used for obesity treatment as well. even among people without diabetes you might lose weight while you are on these medicines but experts agree once you stop you will need strong diet and lifestyle habits to maintain those results so the real question is what does this all mean from a nutritional point of view hello this is trilok i'm a dietitian in today's video we will explore how these modern weight loss drugs work and their limitations from a nutritional point of view Also I'll show you how you can fine tune your diet to naturally produce more of these hormones. So let's begin by understanding what these hormones actually are. After you eat a meal, food first enters the stomach and then bit by bit moves into the small intestine. The small intestine is long, usually 4 to 8 meters, and different regions release different hormones. These gut hormones are collectively called incretins. For today's discussion The two most important are GIP and GLP-1. They stimulate insulin secretion, slow down gastric emptying, and control satiety. It is interesting to note that the insulin stimulating signals actually begin even before you eat. Your brain and nerves actually send an early message to your pancreas to get ready. Then, as food enters the first hundred to two hundred centimeters of the small intestine, in response to the presence of glucose, fat, and protein. This region releases the first gut hormone the GIP which contributes about 1/3 to the total insulin response. This happens within 15 to 30 minutes after a meal. Once the glucose is absorbed, blood glucose levels rise typically within 30 to 60 minutes. This directly stimulates the pancreas accounting for roughly half of insulin secretion. By the time food reaches the last part of the small intestine called the ileum, Most nutrients are already absorbed and the ileum acts like a speed breaker. Any nutrients that escape absorption in the earlier segments and reach the ileum stimulate specialized gut cells to release hormones. The presence of carbohydrates, protein and fiber here triggers the release of GLP-1 and other lower gut hormones. These hormones send powerful signals to the brain to reduce appetite, to the stomach to slow down gastric emptying. and to the pancreas to sustain insulin release here is a simplified timeline in the first 5 minutes your brain and nerves send signals to the pancreas even before you start eating between 5 to 15 minutes gip spikes the first incretin signal between 15 to 60 minutes rising blood glucose and gip action lead to the major insulin release and after an hour to 2 hours glp1 kicks in maintains insulin release for longer adds satiety and slows digestion naturally after a meal gip and glp1 rise to about 2 to 4 times above baseline while natural incretins are broken down within minutes the synthetic versions the drug forms such as semaglutide liraglutide or terzepatide can remain active for up to 7 days before being degraded that means they stay in circulation much longer reach higher effective levels and continue to slow digestion suppress appetite and keep you full for hours that's why people can lose 15 to 20% of their body weight while taking them so these drugs work while you take them but long term results still depend on diet and lifestyle changes let me tell you why many people don't actually change their food choices they still choose high calorie foods they just eat smaller portions while on the medication because their hunger is suppressed but once they are off the medication the hunger suppressing effect wears off they return to eating same quantities as before and the weight comes back this is observed in large trials like step and sarmon trials which showed that while people lose significant weight on these medications most regain a large portion within a year after stopping especially if diet and lifestyle are not changed so if you are someone who is trying to lose weight naturally or you are finishing your medication course Let me show you how you can use nutrition to support your body's own GLP-1 system. 
The strongest natural trigger is soluble in fermentable fiber. This type of fiber forms a gel-like substance when mixed with water, slowing digestion, helping nutrients move gradually through the intestine. Inside the gut, these fibers are fermented by beneficial bacteria into short-chain fatty acids. These compounds activate the ileum and colon, triggering a powerful GLP-1 release. The best dietary sources are oats, barley, psyllium husk, inulin, chicory root, beans, lentils, chickpeas, and fruits like apple, guava, citrus, and berries, plus vegetables like okra and beetroot. Second strongest trigger are healthy fats, mainly monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats found in olive oil, avocado, flax seeds, chia seeds, and fish. With enough fiber in the same meal, you slow down absorption in the upper intestine. So a little fat reaches the ileum, where it stimulates GLP-1 release. Now, you might think more fat means more GLP-1, right? But no. Moderate amounts of healthy fats gives the best response. A high fat diet actually blunts GLP-1 release and adds extra calories. So don't overdo fats. Just use enough to signal your gut hormones. Third factor is protein. Animal proteins digest quickly and are absorbed early, causing a strong insulin rise but less GLP-1 activation. Plant proteins digest more slowly and when paired with fiber, more proteins reach the ileum, giving a stronger GLP-1 release. In a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, researchers found that meals combining legumes and whole grains produced a greater rise in GLP-1 than refined carbs or meat-based meals. Factor 4 is bile acids. The gallbladder releases bile acids after eating to break down fat. But bile acids don't just digest fat. They also act like hormones, sending signals through the gut. As they are reabsorbed in the ileum, they stimulate GLP-1 release. The key here is your gut bacteria convert primary bile acids into secondary bile acids, which are even stronger activators of GLP-1. But a high-fat, low-fiber diets disrupt this conversion, reducing GLP-1 signaling. So, a fiber-rich, gut-friendly diet helps you make most of this bile acid connection. Factor 5 is carbohydrates. Carbs that reach the ileum from foods like steel-cut oats, quinoa, whole grains and legumes produce a mild GLP-1 release, but stronger when paired with fiber, protein or fats. I'm not against the usage of weight loss medications, especially when prescribed by a qualified doctor. But two big questions still remain. How long can you take them safely and what happens when you stop taking them? The nutritional strategies that I shared in today's video and in my previous videos can help anyone lose weight naturally or maintain the lost weight in case if you are finishing your medication course. I hope this video helped you. Please give it a like, share it with someone who needs it and subscribe for more science-backed nutritional videos. Thank you for watching Nutritional Perspective. I'll see you in the next video.